Hi there, Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast review for your ears. This time going to be talking about the 2021 film Eternals. As chronicled in many of my podcasts, I'm a Marvel fan from childhood. I read a lot of the comics, read more Marvel than DC, and I love the movies. So the short version of this review will be... I like this movie better as a sci-fi fantasy that doesn't have anything to do with the Marvel Universe than I did as a Marvel movie. It's in no way a bad movie. It's just not what we expect from Marvel movies, and unfortunately, a lot of that's on us. But it's an interesting movie. Um, Not perfect, but I don't know. I I went in with low expectations, was actually entertained, and that's not what a lot of people came out of it with. A lot of people were disappointed, but if you've seen all the Marvel movies, you need to see it. Um, and I'll get into why later. If you're not into Marvel movies, you might like this because it's not like any of the other Marvel movies. And that's the short review. I was never into the more galactic, cosmic stuff of the Marvel Universe when I was growing up. I mean, yes, Doctor Strange was my favorite, and that got pretty cosmic, but I could wrap my mind around other dimensions and stuff. And as far as Fantastic Four and Silver Surfer and Galactus, this was some pretty big stuff. And so when Guardians of the Galaxy got into Ego and the Celestials, that was out of my wheelhouse, out of my Marvel wheelhouse. I'm just not... I can't say that I read Marvel because it was more realistic to me as a kid, but that stuff was way out. And I don't know, it just didn't feel... It wasn't what I wanted because I was reading X-Men, which is pretty grounded stuff. Every once in a while, they went to space. Um, Master of Kung Fu. Doctor Strange, like I said, was other dimensions and magic more than this cosmic stuff. So I never really knew anything about Eternals or how they became or the mythology behind it or any of it. That was just not, you know, i uh, be perfectly honest with you. I didn't do a whole lot of research about the comic because... This was one of those rare Marvel movies that I have no background on, so I could sit down and watch it as a movie. It is one of only two Marvel movies I haven't seen in the movie theater. I did not see Black Widow for whatever reason. I was busy. Um, It got mediocre reviews. I waited to see it on video, and it was fine. It is five years too late. Had they made it five years earlier, everybody would have loved it. It introduced Yelena, who's great, and Hawkeye, and so it served its purpose. But Eternals, that was playing in the theater, and I had some time, but a a two-and-a-half-hour movie that was getting mediocre reviews, go see it by myself, I I don't know. I just, I had better things to watch, I guess. Um, So it's finally on Disney+, and I watched it, and I've already pre-ordered the 4K, um, because my OCD is not going to let me have a hole in my collection, regardless of what I thought of the movie, right? Um, I have a lot of the non- Marvel MCU movies that are our Marvel movies. We're talking X-Men, Logan, uh, the Blade movies, all that stuff. And the Spider-Man movies, which are not canon until now. I guess they are part of the MCU. This is going to be getting confusing. So anyway, I've got two Marvel shelves, the movies that are in the MCU and the ones that aren't. I don't have every single movie that's not in the MCU Marvel related, but I do have every MCU movie. And so that's why... You know, I had to go ahead and pre-order this. So I sat down the other night to watch this on Disney+, Plus, and you have a choice. You can watch it in the theatrical aspect ratio or the IMAX enhanced. Now, I have, I've been meaning to do a podcast about the IMAX enhanced Marvel movies. I've sampled a couple of them, and it's pretty cool. Um, it fills your screen more for the most part. In some of the movies that were actually IMAX enhanced, and I think there's about 13 of them, not counting Eternals. Maybe Eternals is the 14th, I think. Um, So not every Marvel movie was converted to something that was IMAX aspect ratio. But the ones that were, it opens up the frame a bit, and it, it was interesting. I hated it on Eternals. It switched back and forth more than... I have several Blu-rays and 4Ks that switch back and forth from the IMAX ratios to the others, but it's usually for long periods of time. It'll switch to IMAX for the opening, and it'll switch to to a a different ratio for most of the movie, and then a big action scene, it'll switch to IMAX for, you know, 10 to 20 minutes for that entire action scene. Eternals seemed to pop back and forth within seconds. It would be IMAX, it wouldn't be. IMAX, it wouldn't be. IMAX, and it was just like... 
normally that stuff doesn't bother me. Switching aspect ratios, I sometimes don't even notice them. This was incredibly noticeable. I'm looking forward to watching it a month from now when it comes out on 4K to watch the disc version and see what the difference is. Other than that, it's a great presentation on Disney+. Plus. It's good Dolby Atmos surround sound, um, the, the HDR colors popped. The cosmic stuff was absolutely gorgeous. Matter of fact, the entire movie, the cinematography, everything, Chloe Zhao, Zhao um, who made this movie, Academy Award winning director, made an amazing looking Marvel movie. But I hate to call it a Marvel movie because a lot of it just doesn't feel like a Marvel movie. It has a serious tone to it, even though there's some comedy in it. it it's a bit more serious than some of the other movies. Um, people have talked about it. it has a sex scene. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's pretty brief, but I was like, oh, okay. But again, I from the get-go, this just didn't, from the when it's explaining the background and stuff, it just didn't feel like Marvel to me. I mean, I know it is, and I'm well versed in it now but um so i watched the entire movie from that aspect and there's one thing and i'll get into spoilers towards the end but there was a there's a actor male or female i'm not going to tell you um who's kind of part of the plot twist and i think that person was hired because they can do that kind of plot twist, if that makes any sense. And I'll talk more about it later. But that bothered me from the get-go. I'm like, well, this person's probably going to do this. And they did. Um, just because of the actor. Not because of the movie. Not because of the director. Not because this usually happens in a Marvel movie. It's just because this person is usually hired to do that. And they did that. That would be a complaint. But other than that, like I said, sitting down watching this movie, I had low expectations because the, it's the lowest Rotten Tomatoes. It's the only Marvel movie that's rotten. It's at 40-something percent, which is the least of any. That's worse than Thor Dark World, if you can believe that. And so I went in going, well, I'm, I'm probably not going to enjoy this, and I'll watch it now so I can cancel my pre-order of the 4K in case it's really that bad. Well, as with most movies that are considered flops, and again, this movie's made over $400 million. I wouldn't call that a flop, but obviously it's not done. They probably expected a billion out of it. Uh, they spent like $200 million on it, which is a whole lot of money. But you've got a two-and-a-half-hour beautiful film with pretty flawless special effects from beginning to end. It's got a darker tone. It's a Jack Kirby comic originally, and it's it's not that all his stuff was dark, but more fantastical, and she really captured that. What I really liked about the movie, not to mention the fact you've got an, an A-list cast. They're all great actors who do great jobs in their roles. Some are given more to do than others. Obviously, with a cast this large, they can't get to everyone. I don't want to... I'm trying to dance around spoilers until I get towards the end, and I'll warn you before it comes. Um... I thought the movie was well-paced for two and a half hours. I wasn't bored. Um, there could have been a little bit more action to punctuate it. There could have been a little bit more tie to the Marvel Universe. The after credit scenes kind of do. But one of my complaints, and this is a, a minor spoiler, I guess. When we get to this big plot, to I... We haven't built up the characters enough to do some of the things that happen. It, it would have been bigger. I, I figured Marvel learned from building up things like Civil War. They couldn't have done Captain America Civil War early on. They had to build up the friendship and they had to build up the background to make that really heavy. And so we're told how old these beings are and how long they've been around and for, well, for one thing, people don't like the sex scene or some of the uh, the openly gay stuff or whatever, but what they were trying to show was that these are celestial beings who have been, I don't want to say corrupted, but have been affected by the human race by interacting with humans for thousands of years, and they've begun to sample some of what it is to be human, whether that be sex or violence or whatever, they, they have. Um or food or, you know, because they're, they basically were created beyond those things. They're not human. And so a lot of people have been viewing them like the typical superheroes. And why do the superheroes do this or that in the movie? Well, when you realize that that's what's going on. And I think that could have been explained a little better or showcased a little bit better in the movie, that that's what was going through their heads. That's why the sex scene looks kind of uncomfortable. It's not like, you know, it's, 
we're good at this. It's like they're trying something new because they care about each other. That I, you know, so I, I didn't have a negative effect like some of my friends have had by saying it's a Marvel it has a sex scene in, in the Marvel movie. Well, they were illustrating these godlike type beings were doing human type things. I'll give them that. But overall, it just didn't. It didn't have that. I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> it does have great character development. It has people doing good for the right reasons. It has people becoming better people, you know, living to their potential. It's got all those trademarks that are in a Marvel movie, some uplifting positive things. It's got a little bit of comedy in it. It's actually funny and, and well-earned. Um, but there's a seriousness to it. There's a an epic tone to it. It just feels bigger than the Marvel Universe, to be perfectly honest with you. It just feels like a, a story on a whole different level. And how are these people going to interact with the, the heroes we already know, or will they? Um, uh, by the end of it, during the after credits, they're definitely going to meet, be meeting one of the more down-to-earth. So I'm going to get into some spoiler stuff. It's not going to be heavy spoiler stuff, but it'll be minor spoiler stuff. So you don't want to know anything else. We are at 11 minutes and 25 seconds into the podcast. Pause it here. Go watch the movie and come back. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. Okay, first up <laughs> in my spoiler-ish type stuff is one of them going bad. The actor who plays it is 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 known for doing that in TV series and movies. I, I was hoping that here they've hired this actor and they can be good maybe the whole way through and, and they certainly looked better than they have looked in other properties. And But when they do the twist, it's just like... Well, and in typical Marvel fashion, they're doing it for the right, in their mind, the right reasons, and you don't completely disagree with them, but still. And then what they do to, I guess, penance, to kind of off themselves, it's not clear that that's exactly what's happening, because I don't know if it's permanent, or maybe they can come back from whatever that was. Anyway, I don't want to get into heavy spoilers. Maybe I'll do a separate podcast. There's also been a lot of talk about Kit Harrington's character. He plays a, a human who's dating one of the Eternals, and he keeps dropping hints that his backstory is a little bit more. Well, if you didn't know, the character he plays becomes the Black Knight because he gets that sword, that sword that we see a couple, the couple of times in the movie, and it's the end credit scene. And that voice off to the background who says, you, you know, do you think you're ready for that or whatever at the end, that's Blade. Um so we'll find out more in the upcoming movie how this is going to all work out. So they have tied Blade into the Eternals. That's not what I, I was expecting, tying it into, you know, maybe Doctor Strange would appear at the end or or somebody. Anyway. When I was done with the movie, I went, huh. Because... It's like watching one of those re one of those recent movies that weren't very good. So I'm not I'm not saying go watch these right now, but the two Clash of the Titans movies and that Gods and Monsters movie and those were interesting because of the mythology they presented and how they presented it. Uh, they weren't any of them great movies. Some of them were nice on the spectacle end, but and so that's what I really liked about Eternals. It was a it was a different kind of mythology. Their background the beginnings of the universe and all that kind of stuff. It was interesting how maybe they had kind of been an influence on certain things, even though they weren't supposed to be an influence or how they picked up certain things over it. I mean, all in all, I'll be happy to watch this movie again. I, I got more. I, I liked it a lot better than, than Black Widow. But like I said, I don't. I'm sure down the road it, I'll be I'll consider it more of a Marvel movie. But now I'm going to consider it kind of this anomaly um, that it's just. I thought the Guardians of the Galaxy movies were going to be anomalies, but they weave them into the Avengers pretty well, I thought. But Eternals, to going forward, when I rewatch it, it'll be when I'm in the mood for this kind of mythological, cosmic kind of story, not so much a superhero movie. Because while it does have superheroic-type things, it's not really what it is. And I think they've made a very interesting movie. And um, the best thing about it is Marvel tried something different here. You know, and I don't think enough people are giving it credit where credit is due. It's not what they wanted. It's not Guardians of the Galaxy 3 or Doctor Strange 2 or Iron Man 4 or whatever. 
but I liked it. Like I said, not my favorite Marvel movie, but one of the more interesting movies of 2021. I'll be happy to revisit it soon. Hey, I'm Scott Hamilton, Rockfile. Links below to my other projects. Got some very long podcasts going up on my Patreon if you'd like to check that out. Links are below. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and for listening. Couldn't do this without you.